You're watching the award-winning GHS-TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome to Red Devil Newsbeat, your roundup of the day's top stories you need to know. I'm Brandon Sewell. With me is Maria Strickland, the Mid-South Beat Anchor. Sports Beat Anchor Colin Ewing will join us later in the show. But first, here's the news from around the world. We begin with the developing story. A settlement has been reached in the historic Fox Dominion defamation case. The judge made the announcement hours after the jury was seated for the trial. Details of the settlement haven't been released. Dominion Voting Systems had sued Fox News for $1.6 billion, arguing that during and after the 2020 election, Fox spread lies about its voting machines. Fox executives and TV hosts were expected to testify at the trial. Fox isn't out of the woods yet. Smartmatic, an another voting machine company, is suing the network for $2.7 billion in a separate defamation lawsuit. YouTube is changing how it deals with content related to eating disorders. The company announced it's banning content featuring behaviors that include extreme calorie counting or purging after eating. For recovery-focused videos, YouTube will allow the content with restrictions. Only users who are over the age of 18 will be able to watch. YouTube will also provide crisis resources under eating disorder-related content. Your favorite TV shows will be delayed. Hollywood is looking for is looking at another writer's strike. Writers Guild of America voters passed a strike authorization vote with nearly 98% voting in favor. The union is seeking increased pay and minimum staffing requirements for TV shows. Their last walkout in 2007 and 2008 lasted 100 days and shut down most Hollywood productions. The Writers Guild's current contract ends May 1st. Now, here's the Mid-South Beat. Good evening. New developments in the search for a new MSCS superintendent. One of the three finalists has dropped out. Brenda Caselius withdrew her name from consideration late this afternoon. The announcement comes days after an unveiling event for the position's three finalists turned sour. Caselius is the former superintendent of Boston Public Schools. In her announcement, she said she is no longer interested in the job. More justice is being sought after for Tyree Nichols every day. Tomorrow, Tyree's family will file a civil lawsuit for his death that occurred on January 7th. This lawsuit is against the city of Memphis, the Memphis Police Department, and the officers who were involved in the event. Ben Crump announced this lawsuit on Monday. He has planned to hold a conference in Memphis tomorrow at noon. Teens are now allowed to carry in the state of Tennessee. 18 to 20 year olds can now carry a handgun without having to take any training classes and with no permit required. When Tennessee passed the permitless carry law in 2021, it applied only to those 21 and up or retired military age 18 and up. A California gun rights group sued to allow 18 to 20 year olds. Opponents say they are against the idea of teenagers carrying firearms without the proper certification. Memphis Animal Services is getting its adoptable senior pets ready for prom. This Saturday, MAS will host an inaugural senior dog prom at the local shelter. The prom is open to the public and will promote the adoption of animals over the age of five. The event is 90s themed, complete with cheesy photos and dog safe cake. The pets will be dressed to impress and ready to find their forever homes. We all love our families, but can you imagine working with them every day? That's the case for Dr. Camille Collins, her daughter Hope Henniger, and her husband Paul Henniger. Recognize the names? They are all teachers here at GHS. Student reporter Bailey Lopez talked with all three about what it means to be a literal GHS family. So today we're going to switch from demand into supply. So the ideal teacher I think would be when they invest in you and you know when a teacher can push you to be, do things that you haven't done before, just put a lot of trust in you. When I got out of college, I graduated with a bachelor's of accountancy, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I began to think after 27 years, what does this place mean to me? 
not only is this a place where I work, but it's also a place for my own family. If you don't love this place, you'd be gone. Uh, you know, that's a, it's a family that's dedicated their lives uh, to this school, to the kids here at this school. A lot of people say that moniker that, you know, here we're a family, but to the Collins family, they mean it. Uh, and I think that's a big reason why they've stayed here. I've looked back over the last couple of years, uh, my son Ashton Collins uh, came to teach math. My uh, husband came to teach criminal justice after he retired from the police department. And now my daughter Hope, Miss Henniger, uh, is our film and video. And not only does she teach here, so does her husband, Paul Henniger. And believe it or not, Paul was uh, one of my students. He graduated from here as well. I wasn't completely sure what I was going to do exactly, but there was a job available for, for Spanish, and I thought it was a great opportunity. He is a year older than I am, but when I met him, he wore the same camo sweatshirt every single day, and he would walk from Miss Morales' classroom, and I would walk to Miss Staunton's classroom, and so we had to pass, and I saw the same sweatshirt every day, and I thought he was cute. As I retire, I think a lot about Miss Henniger and Coach Henniger and what their future will be. All I have to do is go to the studio and see Hope learning. I watch uh, Coach Henniger on the baseball field, and you know something? I think that they're gonna do great, and they're gonna keep, keep this, this legacy of sorts going. It would be great if the, the entire group picked up and moved to whatever the new high school is going to be called because uh, the way we see it, the people going there are still going to be Germantown. And that's what makes Germantown is the people. And so without people like the Collins, you don't have Germantown. Good evening, GHS. The Mar Hamlin could be back on the field soon. The pro football player has been cleared to play by doctors. You may, you may remember back on January 2nd, the 25-year-old went into cardiac arrest after making a tackle in a game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Doctors and trainers administered CPR and used a defibrillator on the field to resuscitate Hamlin. Before, he was taken out of the stadium in an ambulance. He has been participating in voluntary off-season workouts this week. Bills head coach Sean McDermott says the team is happy Hamlin is back. The trial of eight health care workers charged in the death of football legend will move forward. Argentina's justice system is trying to determine whether medical malpractice took place in the death of legendary footballer Diego Maradona. An appeals court confirmed today that the eight healthcare workers charged with homicide will go to trial. The 60-year-old died from heart failure in November 2020, the same month he underwent successful surgery for a blood clot on the brain. Memphis Grizzlies power forward has become the second youngest defensive player of the year. Jaron Jackson Jr. beat out Brooke Lopez and Evan Mobley for the award, getting 56 out of 100 first place votes. He averaged three blocks per game, anchoring the NBA's third ranked defense and helping the Grizzlies secure the second seed. And now without John Morant, Triple J will need to guide the Grizzlies to a win over the Lakers tomorrow. That's all the news I have for you today. Back to you guys. Thanks, Colin. Let's take a look at the weather in the coming days. Tonight is expected to be windy with clear skies and a low of 56. Tomorrow, don't forget to grab a pair of sunglasses because it will be sunny and hot with a high of 81. That's it for Red Devil Newsbeat. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.